I'm going to share with you the secret formula that I ask my students to use in order to solve violent problems in the practice room. Okay, fine, it may not be such a big secret, but I'm gonna share with you anyway. So whenever I have a problem, when I'm approaching a piece of music, whether it's new, whether it's old, I always ask myself two questions. Is it a right-hand problem or is it a left-hand problem? That is where you should start your questioning. Are your violin problems at the current moment, is it, is it a result of the right hand or the left hand? And that is an easy kind of template for you to hang on to whenever you're solving problems on the violin. Let's say your sound may not be the best. Let's say you're trying to get a nice thick core to the sound. That may not necessarily be a left hand issue, but I'm gonna reveal why it could be in just a moment. But the first question is that, okay, is it a right hand issue? Is my bow in the correct contact place? Am I using enough weight on the arm? Do I have curved fingers? Is my posture okay? Those are things that you should be questioning once you've established whether it's a right hand issue or a left hand issue with the violin problem. That's how I like to approach all my problems when practicing because that makes a practice more engaging um, and it also just helps you get to the to the source of the problem faster and you can come up with a faster solution. I try to encourage my students to help solve problems in an efficient way. So you're all, you always have this template, whether it's right hand or left hand. So let's use an example, for instance. I've been into Azai lately, so the Obsession Sonata. Like right here, In the music, you have an accent on the up bow. So clearly that is a right hand issue. So what am I going to do with my right hand to accent that up bow? Well, maybe it could be like a flick of the wrist. That could be something as simple as that to solve my accent issue. But now I'm wondering, okay, well now the up bow is not even. How can I make the up bow even alongside the accented up bow? So maybe I have to slow it down a little bit so that way my arm, my right hand can actually memorize what that feeling is. So if I'm playing. So the key here is you have to just take everything at a slower tempo so that way your arm actually remembers what to do and the, and the wrist. So I'm gonna do this very slowly. It's like. So now I'm wondering, okay, well, I got the flick of the wrist, I'm using my arm height, and I'm using my fingers to kind of help with that accented up bow. But I am trying to figure out how I can have smoother string crossings in this particular section. So I'm trying to play this very slowly and I'm trying to just get the, the even, the evenness of the note. So, so I know I have this really awkward left hand that I have to do with my, with my first finger. And that's a, that could be a potential left hand issue. So even when you have established what hand your problem lies in, then you can go into subcategories. Okay, well, is it my arm? Is it heavy enough? Is it my fingers? Is it the, is my wrist not moving efficiently? All of those things you can start questioning, but you'll get to the root of the problems faster and you will be able to solve those problems a lot sooner, making practice more efficient and less frustrating. And that's my goal for you. So have practice be a, a safe space for you, wherever that is, in your home, in your studio, in your conservatory, practice room, whatever the case may be, it needs to be a, a good space for problem solving. Let's maybe think of a situation where now we have the left hand. First thing could be maybe intonation, right? My intonation is not the best. Let's go with the same fragment from the Isai Sonata. So right off the bat, I have to make sure that this perfect fifth is in tune. So what am I gonna do with my left hand and my first finger just to get that perfect fifth in tune? Well, maybe I can perhaps angle the first finger in a specific way. Instead of maybe having the first finger flat this way, I can twist it a little bit so that the perfect fifth will be more in tune. And it could also be maybe the placement of uh, the perfect fifth on both the strings. Now, with perfect fifths, it could be a little bit wonky depending on what instrument you play on. 
like for me, I like to play mostly on the A string with my perfect fifth and I kind of use the side of my first finger to play the D string. So I have a nice, really balanced perfect fifth. Now that could be probably one of the issues I could work on. And maybe instead of pressing or squeezing into the fingerboard, which causes the intonation to go higher, it's not so in tune, but if I relax and just, I understand how the placement of the first finger will be, then I have a better chance of getting that in tune. So remember how earlier I mentioned how the, the intonation and the sound quality could actually be affected by the left hand. This is one of those moments where it could actually occur. So if I'm pressing too hard on the left hand, the right hand could also follow suit um, in terms of the sound quality. It kind of sounds scratchy and your ideal scenario is for you to actually relax on a micro level, figure out what the notes are going to sound like when all the muscles are relaxed. So let's try that. So that's another way to combat that problem is to see if the left hand is contributing to the tension of the right hand. And I kind of lied in the beginning where there are only two options. Well, there's potentially a third option. Sometimes the right hand can cause intonation problems on the left hand. And the left hand can cause different scratchy sounds on the right hand. So how do we even figure out whether or not it's a left hand, right hand, or both hands problem? Well, let's try to maybe go earlier in the Obsession Sonata by Zai and maybe go from there. So if I'm gonna play like all that stuff, then if I'm pressing too hard on the left hand, that's an intonation. My intonation is already really sharp as a result, so I have to relax that. But as a result of pressing on the left hand, you may encounter that the right hand will squeeze alongside the left hand. The reason being is that your tension in your left hand is traveling up to your upper torso and it can potentially travel into your right hand. So you're kind of doing all of this tension in the in the upper body and that could that could result in some out of tune notes some scratchy sounds so if i'm playing it doesn't sound so pleasing but if i relax the left hand that will help relax the right hand so i'm playing like all of that stuff then the sound is really clean and crisp and, and you know breath during this entire process of practicing can really help a lot. So make sure you're breathing, make sure you're relaxed. I always emphasize this in my YouTube videos that you want to make sure that you are relaxed in the approach. That's one of the biggest tips I can give you as a violinist here on this channel is to understand whether you are just maybe pressing down too hard or squeezing the thumb. I know that's a common violin problem with the right hand bow hold, or you may be having a straight pinky and you might be pressing down a little bit. And all of that could affect your, your practice and your sound. So, but I want to encourage you to check out other videos on the channel to help you become a better violin. So I'm gonna leave videos right over here and right over here. And use those videos as a template also to help you solve problems in the practice room.